In this video, we're going to look at supply. Uh, we're going to look at a supply curve, what it means, and why it might shift. We should bear in mind that when we're talking about a supply curve here, we're um, only using it in the case of competitive markets. So it's applicable for our demand supply cross model, which applies to competitive markets, in particular perfectly competitive markets. It's not applicable for markets which are not perfectly competitive, which are either imperfectly competitive or they're monopolies where there's no competition whatsoever. So just bear that in mind. Let's have a look at the rest of the video. When we talk about the supply of goods and services, we mean the maximum quantities that sellers are willing and able to offer for sale for some period of time at various prices. That's assuming, of course, cadres paribus. That is, imagining that all the non-price factors that could also affect the quantity supplied are held constant or are not varying. So here's a table or a supply schedule and it's showing all of the on the uh, in the right column all of the uh, quantities that would be supplied to the market daily for example of kebabs at the various prices okay we can obviously represent this table visually as a graph. But before we do that, we need to clarify a little bit of terminology. When we say quantity supplied of kebabs, we mean particular quantities. For example, if the price were $7, then 7,000 kebabs would be supplied. That's the quantity supplied. Or if the price were $4, then the quantity supplied would be 4000 But when we use the term supply of kebabs, we don't mean that. We mean this. All of the possible quantities that could be supplied at the various corresponding prices. The terminology is important because it could be quite confusing if you mix the two up. So if we represent this table in visual form as a graph, we have this and you'll see we've got a curve that's upward sloping. Now that upward sloping curve we're going to say reflects what we call the law of supply. Now, that law of supply simply means there's a lawful or regular relationship between the price and the quantity supplied of kebabs. This law of supply uh, is the, it can be expressed as when the price of kebabs rises, the quantity supplied increases and vice versa. When the price of kebabs falls, the quantity supplied decreases. Note I didn't say supply increases or supply decreases. I said the quantity supplied. Anyway, so uh, in a more summary form, the law of supply says that the price and the quantity supplied are directly or positively related. And we reflect that in the graph by moving along the existing supply curve. So, as can be seen on the graph, when the price falls, the quantity supplied falls. When the price rises, the quantity supplied rises. Why is it that we have this law of supply? Well, the underlying idea which will be uh, talked about in another video, really, is that the this supply curve reflects the marginal costs of production. And what we mean by marginal costs of production is simply the cost of each additional kebab. Okay? Marginal means additional. So the cost of each additional kebab. And what we are assuming in drawing the curve as we have, so that the law of supply 
uh, is in operation. We're assuming that each additional kebab, or batch of kebabs, each additional kebab costs more to produce than the previous kebab. And for that reason, the price that would be required to cover the cost of each additional more expensive kebab has to be higher too. But we can express it in a different way when we start with price. So if the price of kebabs were to rise, then producers can profitably afford to cover the higher cost of producing additional kebabs, the higher marginal cost. And so they will. They will increase the quantity of kebabs that they supply to the market. If, on the other hand, the price of kebabs were to fall, then it's not profitable for the uh, producers to continue supplying the same quantity as before because the marginal costs will now be higher than the price. They will need to decrease the quantity supplied um, in order to be able to uh, not make a loss on each additional kebab that they're selling. Now the supply curve doesn't need to be how we've drawn it here always or necessarily. When we talk about uh, the short run, uh, this is a situation in which you have, for example, we'll stick with our kebab story, uh, where you've got a kebab store or a kebab shop uh, which is of a fixed size. There's a fixed amount of equipment, there's a fixed space available. The firm can increase the quantity of kebabs that it supplies by uh, buying more raw materials, more meat and uh, bread and so on, and maybe by hiring additional workers. That's how it can increase its production. But it can't increase its production by uh, building uh, another kebab shop uh, in the short run because there's not sufficient time for that. Anyway, so if we're talking about the short run, then we could have a standard supply curve in which the firm can increase output. Um, however, the cost of each additional kebab gets higher and higher, and so the price will have to be higher and higher to cover those higher costs. So we get this upward sloping supply curve. But it's also possible that you could have, uh, in a very short period of time, if we're uh, a situation where the firm can't change the quantity of kebabs that it is offering for sale at all. Uh, there's not sufficient time to produce more. Uh, in that case, we would have a supply curve which would be vertical like this. So there's, uh, there's five kebabs being supplied and it doesn't matter what happens with the price, the quantity of kebab supplied will not change. It will be fixed at five. So you can have a vertical supply curve, but that's normally for a very short period of time, for a very short run period, what we sometimes call the market period. But we can also think about the long run. The long run is a situation where the kebab shop is not limited by the size of the kebab, by the shop, um, or by the limited amount of equipment available. This is where the owner could um, expand their business, expand the scale of their business and uh, build another shop, add more equipment to it, add more workers and so on. So that's a long run situation. And in that case, it might be that you will have a curve that is upward sloping. The uh, law of supply is still in operation but not for the same reason in this case it's because of it's an what we'd call an increasing cost industry that is as the industry gets larger and more uh, kebab shops move into the uh, business into the industry then the costs that are experienced by everyone goes up uh, in that case we show this by an increase in the amount supplied but higher prices reflecting the fact that everyone's experiencing higher costs which they have to cover. 
but it's also possible that you could have a constant cost industry. That is, this is in a long run situation where there's more and more firms entering the marketplace, but it has no impact on the uh, costs that everyone is experiencing, that everyone faces. So the costs per kebab are say $6, and it doesn't matter how much is supplied to the market, the price at which they will be supplied is $6 because the costs of production are not changing. And lucky last, it's entirely possible that you could have a decrease in cost industry. And this is a situation in which as more and more firms enter the market and therefore more and more is supplied to the market, uh, that you could have a situation where everyone's costs are actually falling. Now that seems a little bit odd, but it's it's possible that that can occur. Uh, where more firms move into the market, the government might start building infrastructure to uh, better support those firms. So for example, if you think of an industrial area, uh, this is an area which has been zoned by local government, local and state governments to uh, to be specifically for uh, the production of goods and services. It's not for, you know, uh, where people live in houses. Uh, and they will build roads and they will put in plumbing and so on, uh, sewerage and all the rest of it, that lower the costs of uh, production for this area. In which case you have more firms moving into the market, their costs are actually falling and therefore the prices that they will charge falls as well. Now, these examples that we've looked at where the, supply, the shape of the supply curve is violating the law of supply, uh, we normally won't focus on in this unit. We'll normally just assume that the supply curve is upward sloping, that these, the law of supply is in operation, like this. Okay, so we know that by changing the price you can change the quantity supplied, but what about other factors which can cause a change in the quantity supplied that are not price factors? Well, we've got a list of things that can affect the quantity supplied that are not about price, the price of the product that is. And we can uh, represent this with this um, little mnemonic device here. So we can say NEPT. Uh, the num if the number of sellers in the marketplace increases, then this short run supply curve, this upward sloping short run supply curve, will shift to the right. If the suppliers expect the prices of their goods to fall in the near future, they will increase their supply now. If the prices of alternative products uh, falls, then you'll get more suppliers who are in those alternative markets moving into this market, say the kebab market. So there'll be an increase in supply. If the price of the inputs used in the production process fall, then firms will be able to increase their supply. If technology improves, firms will be able to increase their supply. We can show this graphically by saying that, for example, at the price of $2, only 2,000 kebabs were supplied. But if any of these changes we've just talked about occurred, then at the price of $2, the kebab shops can now supply 5,000 kebabs. At the price of $4, they can now supply 7,000 instead of 4,000. At the price of $6, they can now supply 9,000 instead of 6,000. And we can so represent this change because there's no change in price of the product. It's whatever the price happens to be. The quantity supplied is now larger. We show it by shifting the supply curve to the right. And similarly for a decrease in supply. If any of these factors change as indicated here, the number of sellers in the market falls or the sellers expect prices to rise in the future, or if the prices of alternative products which they could be producing increase, or 
if the prices of inputs go up, so costs rise, or if technology devolves, then whatever the price happens to be, the quantity supplied will decrease. So if the price was $6, instead of supplying 6000 the firms can, are now only willing and able to supply 4000 If the price were $8, then instead of supplying 8000 kebabs, they're now only willing and able to supply 6000 So how do we reflect this? by shifting the supply curve to the left. So this would be a decrease in supply. A movement of the supply curve to the right is an increase in supply. Not just an increase in the quantity supplied, it's an increase in supply. Or if it's a shift to the left, it's a decrease in supply. So in summary, We've seen the law of supply. The law of supply says there is a positive or direct relationship between price and quantity supplied. Price goes up, quantity supplied goes up. Price goes down, quantity supplied goes down. We know that by changing the price, we move along the supply curve. We don't shift the supply curve, we move along the supply curve. And that supply curve remains unchanged, caterus paribus, assuming none of the non-price factors change themselves. But we also know if we relax caterus paribus, we say, what if non-price factors which affect supply, what if they do change? Then that will cause the supply curve, the whole supply curve to shift. It will be an increase in supply if it shifts right, a decrease in supply if it shifts left.